Alright, hey guys, Simon here and we're going on with our design analysis of Braid. Um, I just realized in the last kind of, like looking back at the recording, I went through the first world kind of quick. And, well I guess it is the tutorial world and there's nothing too special about it. We were introduced to jumping. Uh, jumping the enemies, you jump higher when you jump on the enemies. Uh, there's a bit of platforming. There's cannons that shoot out enemies or clouds, which are platforms as well. And then there are spikes and things like that, so fairly basic platforming stuff. And, you know, the only real interesting part, I guess, was the time control, like you can reverse time, which we learned about. And I'm, I'm trying to play through this as though I don't know what's going on. So you can reverse time. And also there's this puzzle thing, which I don't know, I guess it fits... I'm, I'm not quite sure how this fits into the story or the game in general, like why do we... I guess it's just something extra, it is interesting. Oh, I remember... Actually, now that I've solved this, I can't actually get the secrets anymore. You notice how above here, above the wall, there's a path between the two rooms? That's part of this next secret, or the next star, and I, as I said, I'm not getting any of the stars. But now that I've solved this, I can't do that anymore. Also, I realized that the music was actually okay at that level. It's kind of loud in my headphones though, so it might be distracting me a little bit as I play, but the music is so good, I'm gonna turn it up. As we go into World 3, what amazing things are we gonna do today? So it's the same room, Time and Mystery. What was the first one? Time and Forgiveness. Hmm. So I guess the forgiveness... You know, you can reverse time to correct your mistakes. That's kind of the basic game mechanic. Holding shift to reverse time. Time and Mystery. All those years ago, Tim had left the princess behind. He had kissed her on the neck picked up his travel bag and walked out the door. He regrets this to a degree. Now he's journeying to find her again, to show he knows how sad it was, but also to tell her how it was good. I mean, it's pretty obscure in a way, like there's no specifics. I guess they say all the important things, the feelings, mistakes, regrets, but you know, there's no details as to what the events were. For a long time, he thought they had been cultivating the perfect relationship. He had been fiercely protective, reversing all his mistakes so they would not touch her. <laughs> Interesting. So again, the metaphor between the, the story and the gameplay. I mean, we're not really rescuing a princess in the game. Well, maybe we are, who knows. Likewise, keeping a tight rein on her own mistakes, she always pleased him. That's interesting. But to be fully couched within the comfort of a friend is a mode of existence with severe implications. To please you perfectly, she must understand you perfectly. Thus you cannot defy her expectations or escape her reach. Her benevolence has circumscribed you and your life's achievements would not reach beyond the map she has drawn. You know, a number of games try to be philosophical including the ending credits of Minecraft, which I don't really think is should be quite like that anyway. That's another story. So a lot of games try to be philosophical, and most of them, or many of them, I don't know about most, but many of them, sometimes, they turn out a little contrived, a little forced. I don't know, but I like this. I remember I like the story in Braid a lot. Like, it feels genuine. Not, not genuine that this really happened to people, but it's believable, you know, it's human. It's, it's believable as a normal human being. I don't know if I'm normal, by the way. But it's, it just seems real. Whereas sometimes you try to be too clever, or you try to be too... I don't know. I guess I... I yeah, anyway, I, I quite like the story. Tim needed to be non-manipulable. <laughs> 
He needed the hope of transcendence. He needed sometimes to be immune to the princess's caring touch. I mean, here the, the story is talking about two people who care a lot about each, each other, but at the same time, like they want some degree of freedom, you know. And then what they say is true. Like when you are close to someone, sometimes you can't do things that you know they wouldn't agree with. Or you can't do things like, like when you try too hard to to care for someone, then you know you're locked into a certain pattern of 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 behavior. Off in the distance, Tim saw a castle where the flag fluttered even when the wind has expired, and the bread in the kitchen is always warm. A little bit of magic. I'm not sure what this means. Maybe he's gone crazy. And you know, maybe I shouldn't say that. I don't remember the story completely. Is he crazy? Anyway. Magic, apparently. The pit. Oh. We're here already. So the color scheme has changed. The sound has changed. What's that? What's that sound? I mean, it's not blue anymore, it's yellow. And the the, the, the kind of the epic, slow, calm music has is, is been replaced by this curious, tinkling sound. That is a very bright yellow, look at that. So if things were calm before, I guess they're more curious now. And you see the, the key is sparkling green and the door up there is sparkling green. And if we rewind time... Oh! Oh that, you see the arrows above his head. You can actually control how fast time moves and you can actually go back and forth in time. So this is going forward in time. This is going back in time. So you can actually control time a lot more clearly than just holding shift. And when you hold you when you hold down the shift key for a long time, the game will tell you that. And you see how the background changes. Well, I guess the most important thing is the animation. You can see it going forward and back. So now that it's going forward and it was going back before, but the color changes as well. Like when you go when you look back, it's warm and bright. When you look forward, it's dark and foreboding. You know, there's this interesting metaphors going on. Like you're you're afraid of the future, so when you look forward, you're scared. But when you look back, it's all nice and warm. There's some very interesting things going on, and, and it's not even like they don't explicitly say it. Oh, whoops! That's not what I meant to do. All right, so we're jumping across. So that I guess demonstrates to you that whatever is green and sparkling is not affected by your time control. Level's called the pit, and I guess there's no other way to no, know, there is no other way to solve that. And I guess once you're down there, the natural reaction is to rewind to come back up, even if you think you dropped the key because you can't get out any other way. There and back again. Oh, the key's up there. I don't remember if... Oops. Oh, that's right. So you, you heard the grinding sound. And you see the door now down there is... dropped down. So you have to... pick up the key and then rewind time. Let me just go back more quickly. And this way you can escape. I actually want to listen to this music, but uh, it's kind of crowded here. Let's go to the next room, see if we can get... Okay, never mind. The music has changed. 
Look at the background. Is it raining? It's raining. Wow. The level is called Phase. So some of the clouds are sparkling green and some of the clouds are not. Anyway, I just solved it. What you need to do for the first part, of course, is to phase it so that you can jump over. Whereas if the you know, if the phase is wrong, then the gap there is too wide for you to jump across. That music is so good. And the background, look at it! Even though it's raining, you see those the rays of sunlight there on the right. Even though it's raining, it's sunny. It's so amazing. Actually, does it change if you... No? It's the same kind of thing? Okay, let's keep... Keep going here. So if there's a phase going on here, oops. So there's a big gap over there on the right, as you can see. So we have to do this in mid-air if we want to solve this. I don't remember exactly how to do it. Let's see if we can get this right. I guess I can just keep kind of tapping the shift key. Oops, that's too far, isn't it? Damn it, damn it, no, no, whoa, what's going on? Okay, let's try this again. <laughs> so I'm just gonna tap the, sh tap the shift key until we can get that in the right place. Alright, so that's not too difficult. Why is there a platform up there? Is that platform necessary? I think what it's meant to do is to let you see the whole th No, you don't need it to see the whole thing. I don't understand why this is up here. Maybe we'll find out later, or maybe it's just... I don't know. The ground beneath her feet. Her feet. Oh no. Don't die. Actually, no, you can die. Press this. And then... Bring her back to life. Okay, the key is not glowing. So, okay, never mind. I can just kill her. Wait, is that a her? That's a male noise that it makes when I jump on it. The ground beneath her feet, why is it? I don't even remember why <laughs> some of these things are called what they're called. It's raining harder now too, look, you can hear the rain. It's gradually raining harder and harder as we move through the game. Listen to the style of the music and, and everything else. Um, how does that work again? I forgot. Oh, I remember. So we walk here, so we stand here, and then we walk back. And then we flip the switch and then reverse time. And because the platform is not affected by time, we can do this. And then we can do that to avoid... Oh, da, 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 back. We can do that to avoid getting killed. And then we can flip the switch again. So as I said, I've played this game before, so I, I, it kind of helps. Oops, it kind of helps, obviously. And you remember how at the very beginning I said, the puzzles are kind of difficult. It's because you have to think back and forth in time, and you know we're not used to thinking about time in that in that way because you know in the real world time only goes forward. So it's kind of difficult to get your head around these puzzles, and it only gets more difficult as you go forward. So you know if you're really into puzzle games, then I really recommend the game to you. But it can get quite difficult. Oh, these guys. <laughs> wow. 
So those things are getting killed. I think we can... Oh wow, what do you... So we need one of them to get up there. What we can do is... Walk off. Damn it. Okay, so I need to. I can't get up there though. Um. Do I have to do it without seeing it? Ah, oh, I almost had it. I think you can do it. While well, looking at it, you don't have to do it blind like this. I'm just gonna do it blind. Oh, wow! Come back, come back, come back, come back! No. Nope. Okay. Let's just stand here for a while because you're gonna have to rewind time. And that's gonna make you go backwards if you're not standing still. Alright. I think you can- you don't have to do this. I think you can actually s walk along the bottom. And still have time to climb up, I'm not sure though. Yes! No! No! 